Welcome to the ACSA Personal Hub. To access your personalized information and request a core maintenance audit, simply sign in using your ACSA student ID and password. Once signed in, you will see the Personal Hub homepage with the My Profile tab already selected. To begin a self-internal audit request, you will need to locate the Company Access heading. There, you will find a link to your company's member hub. Company audits must be applied through the member hub. If you are not a key contact with access to the company's member hub, please reach out to one of your company's key contacts and ask them to request a core maintenance audit with you as their selected auditor in training. For any questions or concerns, please reach out to the core department. The core department email is core at youracsa.ca. Clicking on the company name brings you to the company page with the summary tab selected. Here you'll find information on your company's WCB account, core summary information, and contact details. To request a core maintenance audit, click on the Request an Audit tab. This page displays the current core cycle. To begin the application process, click on the Start Application button underneath the Core Maintenance Audit heading. This page provides you with all the relevant information about your company, including the company name, WCB account number, and industry codes. There are terms and conditions related to data gathering that must be reviewed and accepted before continuing. After accepting, click on the Continue to Application button. You are now ready to fill out the core maintenance application, starting with the Contact Details tab. The contact detailed page provides the ACSA with information for getting in touch with your company. First, you'll find the employee numbers section. This is where you are prompted for both the current employee count and peak employee count for your company. For this example, let's use 25 for both the peak and current numbers. Next, you must input the industry codes, which specifies the company's industry. These codes should be the same as the ones that were included in your previous certification audit. You can search and select the industry codes from the drop down list. In this example, we will type 406 and select 40604 from the related search results. Depending on your company, you may have more than one industry code. The key personnel section is designed to identify those who are most relevant individuals at your company who are responsible for core. This must include both the CEO and CFO. These contacts are based on ACSA records. If you need to update this information, simply open the key contact form by clicking click here, fill it out and email it to the email address in the form. Finally, we were prompted to put the applicant contact information, name, email and address, and daytime phone number of the company's primary contact for application related inquiries. Throughout the application, there is a save button at the bottom of each page. This allows you to save your progress and come back to it later with all the information saved. Now that the information on this page has been input, you can proceed to the next page by clicking the next step button. On the group audit page, you are asked to confirm if this will be a group audit or a single company audit. In this example, we will be confirming it to be a single company audit i.e. only one WCB account number. To move forward with a single company audit, click on the Continue Single Company Audit button. You're now prompted to input your answers to the site description questions. Let's get started. On the site description page, you are asked to answer the site description questions under the following headings. Documentation, fixed work sites, field work sites, job roles and training, health and safety committee, and shift work. The answers to those questions will be dependent on your company specific breakdown and operations. For this example, we have filled out some general information.
Now that the information on this page has been input, you can now proceed to the next page by clicking the Save and Continue to Worksite Details button. On the Worksites page, you can see there are two areas of interest, the Current Employee Worksite Summary by Company, and the Core Maintenance heading. Under the Current Employee Worksite Summary by Company, you will see that the company name, heading, as well as the headings from Senior Manager to Worker Level. the total heading and a message displaying employee count is too low. Every time you add a new worksite, the breakdown will be updated to include the revised numbers. You will need to input all of your currently active worksites and employee numbers. Your overall total number of employees from all levels must match your declared number of current employees. When it does match, the employee count is too low message will disappear. This helps you ensure you're accounting for all persons covered under your company's WCB account number. Under the core maintenance heading, you will see the company name and other information like peak and current numbers. To edit your peak or current, all you need to do is click on the pencil icon and a pop-up window will display, which will allow you to update the information. To add a worksite, you can click on the add a new worksite button. The Worksite Details page is where you will get to provide a detailed breakdown of all worksites that are to be included in your audit. I would like to draw your attention to the Alert Information section on the bottom of this Worksite Details page. Please note the interview requirements are as follows. At least one senior manager and one worker must be included in the audit. In the absence of a senior manager, the company's most senior person should be accounted for at this level. If you do not have a supervisor or manager, the system itself will redistribute the questions to the correct level in the audit tool. And finally, there needs to be at least one valid worksite recorded. For each alert you address, it will be removed from the end of the page. With the above in mind, let's get started on inputting a worksite. This can be done by clicking the Add a New Worksite button. The pop up window will appear. On this page, you will need to input worksite type, location, including full address, with a breakdown of persons from senior manager right down to the worker level at this worksite. In this example, we will select office slash shop and include the following breakdown. One senior manager, three managers, one supervisor, and zero workers. Clicking the update worksite button will save the information and close the pop-up window displaying the worksites page. If we now look at the current employees worksite summary by company, we can see that it has been updated to account for the persons we inputted at the main office shop. We can see the total personnel so far is four. The message displaying employee count is low remains. As mentioned earlier, each time you add a site, this will get updated and the employee count is low message will disappear as soon as your overall total number of employees from all levels matches your confirmed number. This time, instead of adding an office shop, we want to add a fixed worksite. Click the Add a New Worksite button. The pop up window appears. On this page, we will select Fixed and fill out the required information. In this example, we will put the following breakdown. Senior managers, zero, managers, one, supervisors, four, and workers, 16. Clicking the Update Worksite button will save the information and close the pop-up window. Now that we have our worksites added with a breakdown of personnel for each location, under the Current Employee Worksite Summary by Company heading, we can see the total personnel for the company, including the overall breakdown from senior manager to worker level. 
Please note the total number of all employees, senior managers, managers, supervisors, and workers at your worksite must equal the current number of employees that you have entered for each company. In this example, we have one senior manager, three managers, five supervisors, and 16 workers, which adds up to the current employed confirmed 25, as noted under the core maintenance heading. Given that it matches, the employee count is low, message has disappeared. Now that the information on the worksites page has been input, we can proceed to the next page by clicking the next page button. Welcome to the core course holder verification page. This page helps you ensure your company is meeting the course requirements for core certification. Let's walk through the process. Here you can see the first required core course. Beneath the course title, you'll find a field where you can enter the ACSA student ID of the employee who holds this course certification. Simply type in the ACSA student ID and click enter. It automatically verifies that the ID belongs to a valid course holder. If it's a valid ID, the name and course completion date on file will be displayed. As you can see, the course completion date is now displayed, confirming that this employee is a certified course holder. We will need to repeat this process for each of the required courses. If a course holder is not available, an exception be can, re can be requested. Simply check the box beside the course title and a box will appear, allowing you to provide further information on this exception request. The page ends information on special circumstances where the course requirements might not be currently met, but you would like to request an exception. For an example, employee who was a course holder for one of the courses is no longer at the company, then we would need to register someone else into the course. If so, register someone and then type a course holder is not available. You can explain the reason why. Or if your company has utilized shared training, this is when your company has access to a course holder who works at a commonly owned company. In that case, a shared training form would need to be downloaded and uploaded. In this example, the course holder is the same for all and no exceptions are required. Now that the information on this page has been input, we can proceed to the next page by clicking the submit and continue button. The auditor selection page allows you to select the auditor type. Let's walk through the three different options. On this page, you will select the type of auditor who's conducting the audit. Option one, certified auditor. This option is available for audits to be conducted by auditors who are already certified by the ACSA and have maintained their auditor status. Option two, consulting auditor. This is for audits conducted by a consultant auditor chosen from our consultant auditor list on the your ACSA website. Please note you'll have to have agreed to work with this auditor before requesting the audit. Option three. This option is for audits conducted internally by an auditor in training, i.e. someone who has successfully completed the three day auditor training program and is now wishing to conduct their self qualification audit as their company's internal as well. We will be using the last option. When we click on auditor and training self internal audit, we can enter the ACSA student ID of the auditor and training that we wish to assign to the audit. When we enter the ACSA ID, the system will load the information for our selected auditor, ACSA ID, name, and city. Click the select this auditor and training button. You'll be taken directly to the documents tab. Since no documents are required for this example, you can click on the save and continue button. This will allow us to advance to the next stage without any documents being flagged as required. We are on the final page of the core maintenance audit application. This page displays a submit your audit heading and has information to be reviewed and acknowledged. Information such as the type of audit being submitted, expected review times by the core customer service team, and an acknowledgement that all information provided is true and accurate. We're almost done. Just one more step before submitting your core maintenance audit request. Please read the conditions carefully. You agree that all you, the information you've provided is accurate. The checkbox acknowledging the terms and conditions is checked, and the submit your audit request button is clicked. 
bringing you to a new page confirming your audit request has been submitted and a display heading what's next. Note, if you are unable to submit your audit request, then a list outlining the areas in need of addressing will appear. All required fields must be addressed before the application can be submitted, i.e. no worksites added, then you would know you need to check the worksites tab to input the information. Great, your core maintenance audit request has been successfully submitted. The ACSA will review your request and you'll receive an email notification within two to five business days. And once approved, your auditor will have access to start the audit in their individual personal hub and can begin the audit process. We will now navigate to the personal hub, sign in as the auditor and click on the request and audit tab under the heading applications in process. You can see that the application request that was submitted and it will have an audit status update under the heading stage. Once the request has been submitted, the stage will be set to audit request submitted to ACSA, including the applied on date. You can track the status of your audit request in the personal hub. Your application is now in the audit request submitted to ACSA stage. You can also see the date your request was submitted. Your audit request is locked, so you can't edit it at this time. If any clarifications are required, the ACSA will contact you using the information provided in your application. This is the end of our walkthrough for requesting a self-internal audit. Should you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to the CORE CS department by phone or by emailing core at youracsa.ca.